Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Kirusho here, and now. Before we do begin, let's give a brief little review. You guys are seeing four of these series pop, well, five series, I mean. I usually I usually do three mini shots at a time, but then Blaze Hollow, the Blessed Years, are going to be four, so we we're going to do four. But that motherfucker kept winning a coin flip, so I ended up deciding to do five. Now, with that being said, Blaze, your ass kept getting, kept getting lucky on that fucking coin flip. That pissed me off. Seriously, he won too many times. Anyways, I know his ass is watching this and he's laughing. Anyways, with that being said, I'm going to be treating all these like part ones. If you guys do like the series, then watch it. That's how I'm going to be scaling these. The one that has the most views might roll over into the New Year's and become a series. And with that being said, let's give a beginning. We'll start over in Three Portlands. And Three Portlands, they do quite a lot of things. And some people are looking to make a lot of money. They have knowledge on anomalous technology. Knowledge on a lot of things. And currently something has been brought to their attention. 682 is a very powerful, large, and dangerous threat. And it's because of this information that they need to do something. Certain anomalies are better whenever they are contained. Some are better off destroyed. And some are better off being left alone and forgotten about. But at least having something to observe them. And this is a bit of a strange situation. No one knows what happens if you destroy 682. There could be unknown ramifications. However, the simplest one is the unkillable reptile finally dies. He is given a way to rest. Or at least be out of this reality. No one really does know. 682's anomalous abilities make it unkillable. And it has said it existed from the beginning and will be here at the end. It will be the last thing alive when every star in the universe fades. And all it will have is the dark. 682 is dangerous. And right now, somebody brought in a sample of its flesh. And they are curious about it. It costs quite a bit of a hefty penny. Though... What they can do with this is currently unknown. And Miss Midoriya, the leader of this team of scientists, does begin to pose ideas. They already do quite a lot. They build and make anomalous things to work and do things. They've made clones. They've made SCPs. But those things, they usually end up being bought and made to fight each other. And that, that's what they can do with this. They can make a 682. In theory, make one that can adapt. Or, well, do something with it. This thing doesn't care about its flesh. The moment it parts from its main body, it's practically useless. As far as they're aware, it could lose some of its anomalous abilities. But if it does have them, if they can sell this thing off as a clone of 682, it will be worth a lot of money. But I mean a lot of money. And that, that's what's currently running through their mind. They begin to work on the project. A clone of this monster. It will be a massive, massive undertaking. And getting it made will certainly be something. And currently we do actually have Inco Midoriya who does begin to miss problems nearly immediately with the project. They are currently working with some dead cells, and rejuvenating them will not be a problem. Keeping them, quote-unquote, alive will be simple and easy. But making them animated, making them do something, that's going to require a lot more time. They can toss a piece of flesh into a chamber and hope it regenerates. Usually, it should begin a process, mixed with certain chemicals, and wha-bam, you have a clone. 
but they're working with unknown anomalous science. And that is where they do need to take some care to not create another one of those unstoppable lizards. Now, Inco and her team do try to make an SCP. And this, it fails over multiple, multiple attempts. Getting it off of the ground is almost impossible. And Inco, just in her office one night, questioning many things, looking at much of the data. The cells of this thing are still alive. There's no doubt about that. Further research showed they were still alive. But that is the thing. No matter what they do, they can't seem to get around it, make it do anything. It sees the cells as, well, not even their own. And that process is harder. And Enko, she's beginning to go through a bit of an idea. Currently, her mixing her drink in her hand and staring at the ice cube, which does float around. And currently, it would have passed through her mind what they might need to do. And she just doesn't stand. A lot more aware of the ethical boundary she is about to cross. Now, currently we do actually have in the lab the next morning, where people, they did begin to come in. And Inko, she just sat there, staring at the tube in front of her, and looking at it. And people, they turned and saw it. There's something inside the test tube that is currently alive. It's building. It's making. And this, it does alarm them. It's almost like an egg. An egg shape, or whatever it is. But it's growing. And this, it does make Inko happy. What she did was simple. She watered down those cells with some fresh, fresh living ones. It was quite the process. Liquefy the DNA, and then run it through their system. However, liquefying it with her own inside of it made things easier. And right now, cells have successfully bonded to each other. That was the easiest part. And now, it's smooth sailing from here. All they have to do is watch and wait. They could not bond. They could not clone. Recreate more and more flesh. But now they can. And this, it makes Inko a bit giddy. Her thinking about the price tag this thing might fetch. And currently, there is where weeks do begin to go by. And over time, this thing does begin to grow and grow and grow. And after about a month has passed, there is some concern about what's going on in Three Portland. There is concern by staff and even people who are in charge about this quote-unquote project. Some people have heard rumors that this staff had 682 DNA and what they could do with it. There's many things that can happen. And Enko does sit there, her in her office, thinking about it a lot. She's hidden much of this information, made sure that not a lot of people do actually know the truth. She's the only one who knows what this thing might be. And currently her lab does have an alarm go off. Her jumping up and turning her head. Her seeing that right now, the room this thing is supposed to be inside of is breached. And this does alarm her. Currently her picking up an anomalous weapon and making her way down to the lab quickly. And a ton of people, they've began to get this place down because of what the implication could be. Either somebody broke in or something is breaking out. And currently Inko does go to run to the room. Her watching as a ton of people, they all do stand there, staring at the cocoon on the ground and the tube that's been broken out. And currently there does lie a hand on the ground. It beginning to somewhat have its fingers move before it would have bring up another hand. Currently, they're being where? 
talons do a claw through the cocoon, and suddenly does not sit up. It sitting there, and beginning to take a breath. And this, it does somewhat surprise them. The cleaning process should have done more. But clearly there was some there was some rejection to the growth hormone. This thing turned out young. It should have been full grown. Her stepping forwards. And some people do hold their weapons up. Azenko would bring her hand up. And forming all of them. Two, lower their weapons and be on standby. She's approaching subject. Zero, zero, seven. And this... It does sort of alarm some people. Her stepping forwards and bring her hands up. And this creature stares at Inko. It has its eyes locked onto her. And whenever she does this not embrace it, it responds back to her. But she's a lot more alarmed. This is her son, by technicality. However, it also looks more like a reptilian. It looks like a monster. And it will definitely fetch a hefty price. Though, fact of the matter is, they still need to do quite a bit with it. Currently her bring her hand up, grabbing something out of her jacket and jabbing it directly into Izuku. And Izuku, he would just want to pass out. Him smashing onto the ground as you go to turn. Telling somebody about what they need to do. Take subject 007 and make sure he is properly secured somewhere. Something went wrong with their data. And people, they do start inco. Because this was definitely a bit more of a surprise. Somebody though, they feel like they know what's wrong. They feel like they know what she must have done. She's in it for profit. And this certainly means quite a bit. And Enko does get ahead to her office. Her getting things ready because they have a success. A successful clone of the unkillable reptile. It's intriguing. But it does pose questions. The cocoon. It must have been a way for it to mature. But if she's correct, he's got to be... No, no. That's not right. He's got to be in the realm of seven, eight years old. At least that realm for a human adolescent. Usually their copies are all full-grown within three, four weeks, but four weeks and he's that old. It shouldn't be possible. Hmm. Okay, so there was some resistance. But is that because of a problem with his DNA or because he's actually adaptable? Hmm. They should inspect him more. Though it is quite intriguing. That passing through her mind. And a person does come to walk in. Currently, Inko looking up as he usually at least yell at her about what the hell she did. She put her own goddamn DNA into that thing. They tested it, and they went over it. It is half human. Jesus. D does she even know what this implies? I do, yes. So you understand that what you created is an abomination. I wouldn't exactly say that. What else would you say? I say, I may have been able to put moral restrictions on 682. <laughs> You're not being serious. That thing is cloned from its tissue. And your, I'm assuming, involvement? Correct, yes. You're, you're sick. <laughs> exactly what do we do here? I know what we do here. What do we do here? Answer the question. And then ask yourself again. Exactly what is wrong with me? We 
create monsters, and sell them to the highest bidder. We create clone bodies for the rich. We make sure that people can either extend their lives or they have a backup plan. What we do is also grow organs. We are able to find cures for many diseases, some that humanity are still dealing with. And we sell those cures. You see, most people are not ready for what we have to offer them. Most people don't want to accept the anomalous phenomenon that our technology can do. We still have yet to find out how to explain certain aspects of this technology to the world. So you're saying that we should stop it? As far as I'm aware, we just built another SCP-682. And the implication of this is limitless. The application of it is dangerous. His cells are adaptive. No oh, good, yes. Exactly what I was hoping to hear. Is that all? Because this all could have been an email. Enko, that boy is your son. No, he isn't. Subject 007. Somebody who must go up on a market immediately. However, he will... Hmm. Does data show that he does age? He... Enko, you seriously cannot be for this. I have no connection to it. As far as I'm aware, I just use my cells. I filled in missing gaps in data. So you're saying because you didn't carry it, it doesn't matter. I'm saying it was a part of the project. You are aware, if I did have a child, I would care for it. I would love it and nurture it. But that thing is not my child. All right? And if you are done here, then you can leave. Or is there anything else you'd like to talk to me about? Them bring their hand up. And Enko, we're going to do one thing. Right now, both of her hands are in her pocket. And she's going to do one thing. Just go to move her hand up with a jacket and blast the person with the weapon. Currently, they're being shot in the chest and falling backwards. As their body does begin to disintegrate. And this does mean quite a bit. Currently, Enko sitting back down and beginning to get some things drawn up along with even an insurance plan for them. This thing is 682, has adaptability and an urge to murder, unsatiable bloodlust. That is what they know about the lizard. And currently we do actually have Izuku. Izuku had a lot of things going through his mind. He was curious, intrigued, and he wondered about quite a lot. He was new to the world. He can actually hear things through his ears, not just pick up on them through that glass. Along with that, while well, everything felt louder, whenever he stepped outside, they got better. They were still loud, but then he could hear them better. And he was okay. And that does go through his mind. Currently, him, sitting there in a cage, as he does, see somebody put some food in front of him. Currently, him, looking down at it and being kind of confused. Him, stepping forwards, and going to start to smell it. Him, looking at that, as a person, would go to express that they still can't believe it looks that human. They go looking up and staring at the person, turning his head. And the person stares at Izuku. Because he seems like he understood him. And Deku does stare at the person. Them expressing. Hello? Hell. Hell. Them staring at Izuku. Trying to brokenly say hello. And all he's really doing is saying a syllable. He's having trouble on the second one. Though this does show intelligence. And the person, they do get to bring their finger up. Them putting it in the cell, or the cage I mean, 
and watching Izuku. And this, it does bring a security measure. But Deku, he does his own going to stare at it. Currently, him having his eyes lock onto it since it is the closest thing to him. And the person, they do stare at Izuku. And eventually, somebody does get to come by, picking up this creature, them handing off a lot of money to Inko and her team. And currently, the cage Izuku is put in, or the container, it is loaded up into a specialized truck. And Deku, he does bring his hand up. Currently, Inko staring on as the beast, it is reaching out to her. And this, it does make her a bit more intrigued by it. People said that whenever it interacts with you, it is not dangerous. It approaches you with the curiosity of a child. She would not like to believe that. Whatever that thing is, it did come from her DNA. But it is not human. At least, not in her mind. And this, it does somewhat make Inko surprised. She feels a rush of sadness. However, no, no. That is not her baby. If she did have one, she'd be holding one in her arms. Seeing his little face. Watching him. And she'd care for him a lot. She'd actually feel something towards it. She's having an emotional response. One that her mind seems to not be able to overcome properly. Right. Her gonna turn and walk to her office, trying to hide the fact that this distress is apparent on her face. Now, with that being said, Izuku is currently taken to an arena, and he is one of the creatures they want to see battle against another creature. They want to see the actual adaptability, not just see this quote-unquote data. If this data is bad, if it was wrong, then they just spent money on an SCP that may not do what it says. However, people will get to see it get ripped apart. So hey, they can just get their money back, or if these people want to lose actual customers, they'll lose customers. Their reputation will be kaput, and they will lose all future customers from then on. And this, it does mean a lot. The reputation lies on whether or not this creature will kill for them, or whether or not it will even survive the first matchup and show off strange abilities. And with that being said, I do believe that that is a good point to leave this part off of. And I do hope you guys enjoyed. And Merry Christmas.